Um, do you want to maybe kick off and um, give a little bit of a background intro of who you are, what what you kind of um, have been doing in the, in the hospo industry, and uh, what makes you love whiskey? <laughs> I love whiskey for the taste, bro. Um, <laughs> well, so I'll start from scratch. Yeah, so um, yeah, so I've been I've been in bars for twenty five years, or thereabouts. Um, just used to work in bars in Norway, throughout Europe, Spain, a fair bit. Um, moved to Australia in in, in, in 99. My um my journey with whiskey probably started more when I moved into consultancy and uh, started working for big brands. I used to work a lot for for Johnny Walker in a Diageo portfolio. Did some work with Aperno as well. Um, and when we opened our own bars, uh, started opening in 2010 with Eau de Vie, You know, a lot of the focus moved towards whiskey um, and cocktails. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, I've been in whiskey for a long time and I'm a, a keeper of the Quake as well, um, which is a, a, a great honor. So I've been able to, you know, co- fully immerse myself in, in the whiskey industry for the last 10, 15 years. And for people that don't know Keeper of the Quake, can you give a little bit of background on that? Yeah, it's weird. Um, it's, I don't know how to describe it. It almost feels like it's a Freemasons for whiskey. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like this, uh, it's a very, very small society, if you like, where um, it's started by the big whiskey companies in Scotland, um, I think in the 70s or 80s, so going back a while. And each year they nominate, I think it's maybe 50 or 80 people from all over the world that get then invited to join the, the, the keepers. Uh, the majority of the people who are part of the keepers are um, people who work at distilleries and, and work for the brands and they get Becoming into the Quake is a recognition of all the work they've done for the whiskey category. Um, I'm not one of them, so so um, I'm as much just a drunk enough whiskey and talk enough about it for them to to want to invite me in. But yeah, it's quite a it's quite a um, an honor to be to be part of that. To be honest. Um, so we've got the Solera Rye by Gospel Distilleries, which is a uh, Victorian Melbourne-based uh, distillery that's doing some really interesting. Uh, stuff with their rye as well as um, the Solera system process uh, that they've got up um, in their distillery there. It's, from, it's a rye whiskey, yeah? yeah? So I'd say Mali rye. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that cor- correctly, but it's uh, from a region in Murray region in South Australia, so from where they get the rye. Whiskey time, man, it's early. <laughs> I mean, for me, I get, I mean, I can, I, like I do tell, I can tell it's a young whiskey. Um, there's a bit of alcohol on that nose. It's quite sweet, actually. It reminds me of um, brandy more so than whiskey, a bit of spice and a bit of um, raisin, I suppose. A raisin cake. Yeah, a bit, bit Christmas cakey. Yeah. I'm getting some interesting cereal notes once it's been sitting there for a while. Um, like breakfast cereal kind of coming through on the palate there as well. Yeah. There's a water on it too. Yeah, it's kind of metal like that, of it. that toasted bread or uh, yeah. toffee. There's a bit of toffee on there. Yeah, I get I get porridge, bro. Bit of porridge. <laughs> <laughs> We're having the whole the whole breakfast. Uh, <laughs> rendition there the whole mix Very cool so these guys are where are they from they're from um... uh they're from brunswick all oh, right yep so right in the stick of it yeah rye whiskeys normally for me are tends to be like quite peppery like really really uh spicy was this is it feels a bit more minty to be honest all right like, a, like a fresh like a fresh spice not a heavy spice it's nice and smooth though bit short in the finish but yeah that's all right actually I don't mind it at all it is uh, quite young so this this one is um this is the first we've ever, ever done that it's technically too young to be called whiskey so it's less than uh, less than two years for Australia uh, but they've put it out um, 
as uh, kind of an experimental series. And I think it's it's challenging that idea that young whiskey is terrible because this to me is is great. Um, I think this is for value for money for something that's sitting on your shelf and uh, you can go to here and there or every night. You know, it's it's quite an easy drink. It would be great in a cocktail as well. Um, it's obviously not for that special occasion, um, but it might be for that every other occasion. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, yeah, I do, it's definitely smooth and drinkable, but like I said, the first thing that sticks out once I put it to my nose is that it's young, like it, it feels like it's got, you know, a fair bit of alcohol on the nose and it's it's got um, that grassy kind of mess that you get from a, from a young whiskey um, and a bit kind of green. Um, definitely would get better with age, I think, but, um, you know, if people are happy to get involved at this early in age, why not? It's nearly, nearly all there on the nose. So it's not as complex, but it's still very smooth, very drinkable. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's it. Should we dig into number two? Sure. Okay. So we've got um, the guys from Whippersnapper Distillery. So this one, um, the story goes, this is a, uh, a private barrel that we've got off of them. Um, so it was a bit of an experimental series and uh, we got the 200 litre barrel, I think it was from them. Um, so this one is is just in our whiskey bit packs for, for subscribers out there. Uh, so far, these are takes on American, more the American style of whiskey than rather than Scottish style of whiskey, right? So these are, this is wheat, barley and, and corn. This is, yeah, very much an American style. Yeah, more of a bourbon. Yeah. But less corn than bourbon, right? So yeah. So the the upshot, which is the the main product from uh, the Whip Snapper guys, is fifty one percent corn. So you, you're bourbon, um, but this one is is about a third of each between wheat, corn, and barley. Not barley. Yeah. yeah, it smells like bourbon. You know, you get that that vanilla straight on the nose. I get bananas and apricot there as well. Oranges as well, a bit of citrus on that. Quite oily though, quite like um, a buttery thickness to it. It's actually got a lot of orange on the palate, like like a good hit. And it's still a fair bit of vanilla and, and um, it's quite sweet. And a little bit of spice. Actually, not bad. It's not a bad, uh, bad dram, actually. Oh, no. Nice. It's got a uh, maple yes. stir. It does. That sits there on the, on the, on the back end there. That would be good mixing. Definitely good for, uh, you know, mixing with, um, as well as drinking meat, I reckon. Um, it's, uh, it, it's very, very much Moorish. Kind of, you want to go, <laughs> you want to go have another one. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's the, that's the good thing with whiskey, man, you know? You want more than just the one. Well, last but not least, we've got uh, Launceston's Australian Sherry. So, Pericast, Australian Sherry. So, that's why we've got the dryness there. Yeah, yeah. So, this is on the three-year mark. Uh, this we, is... Barley, so, we got some... Is that barley whiskey? Yeah, or? it's barley, so single malt. It reminds me of a lowland whiskey. So light, bit of bite, bit of stone fruit, bit of citrus, bit of vanilla on the nose. A little bit. There's there's still a lingering that finishes very long, and that's kind of a little bit dried out. Yeah, yeah. It's still light for a sherry cask open flavor and, and taste. I don't know the Apera too well. So Apera, as far as I know, is just the Australian word for sherry. It's not overly sweet. You have a bit of vanilla on the nose and a bit of sweetness on the palate. A bit of apricots there. Yeah, exactly. A bit of, bit of stone fruit and then 
bit of a burn on the back there, a bit of spice on the on the on the finish. Um, so three years, so three years, yeah, definitely still still young. I can feel it in my sitting here when I run after a sit. But it definitely has the characteristics of a single malt. Like I said, it really reminds me of a lowland whiskey. Um, in that lightness and um, dryness on the finish, um, like a like a pre dinner pre dinner dram. Good stuff. Thanks for yeah. joining me. I really uh, enjoyed our little uh, chat and, and the whiskeys, obviously. Yeah, that's uh, good. Hopefully, Thanks we so can much. do it do it again in person once all this uh, coronavirus stuff is it's over okay. and done with. That's it. We'll get some uh, we'll get some cigars going and uh, and stuff. That'd be good. Cool, man. All right. Take it easy.